Story recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain an adventure, drama, horror film called High Life. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Inside a space station, a baby named Willow plays by herself in her makeshift playpen. Her father, Monty, talks to her via the speakers while he's making repairs outside the ship. Willow continues to babble, distressed when the movie playing on her screen ends. Her cries grow louder, blaring inside Monty's spacesuit, causing him to drop his wrench out of reach. Monty freezes, staring blankly into space as one of his only tools in the space station disappears. He snaps out of it when Willow starts babbling again. Willow watches from the screen as her father enters the airlock room and removes his spacesuit. Monty gathers vegetables from the garden and makes baby food to feed Willow. As the day goes on, Monty focuses on caring for the child on his own. He is troubled when the lights go out in the hallway but is thankful when the power comes back. The day continues with Monty talking to the baby as he cleans up. He rambles on about recycling their waste then tries to teach her the word taboo. Monty wonders what his father would think of him now, noting that Willow has broken the laws of nature. As Willow sleeps, Monty sings her a song softly, feeling her breath and heartbeat. The lights turn red, and an alarm blares from afar. Carefully, Monty gets up and leaves. In a control room, Monty records his progress on the computer. He reports the repairs he made to the station and that he and Willow are in good health. The computer receives a response that his clearance is granted, allowing their life support to continue for another 24 hours. Finally, the power turns back on in the station, and the alarm stops. Relieved yet tired, Monty enters the morgue and unzips a bag, revealing a blonde woman inside. He zips the bag up again and removes it from the table. He then starts moving all the bodies inside and dressing them in spacesuits. One by one, he carries the bodies and releases them into space. Once all are gone, he stares into the void, letting go of the past that brought him to where he is. Monty turns back, seeing the only other spacesuit left inside. He imagines a red-headed woman wearing a spacesuit, floating in the room as if inviting him to join her. On his knees, Monty weeps, fighting to push down the thoughts. Monty heads back to the morgue, staring at the empty room as Willow cries. He logs the deactivated cryogenics in the control room before comforting the baby. Broken and overwhelmed, Monty begs Willow to stop crying. Once she's calm, Willow pokes at a scar on Monty's arm, leading him to remember the doctor who tended to him before. Once Willow is asleep, Monty ponders over their situation. He is alone with the child in space, with no hope of ever returning to Earth. With those in mind, he entertains the idea of ending both their lives. Monty heads to the control room, staring at the computer that plays a video of a boy at the beach. Monty has grown tired of the footages of life on Earth, seeing it as a virus that drives him insane. He heads for the infirmary and searches the medicine cabinet. When he finds an empty bottle, he throws it against the wall in frustration. Next, he finds another bottle and spills its contents in his hand but places them back in the bottle, leaving only one. Finally, Monty decides against his plan to end it all. Since the space station left the solar system, Monty hasn't been able to contact Earth, even though he receives the videos from Earth. He wonders if the videos were programmed to make them think they can still return. When Monty sleeps, he dreams about his childhood, when he found his dog dead in the river banks with his friend running away from the scene. Not long after, his friend was found dead, bearing a head wound. Back on Earth, a woman interviews a professor who expresses his disdain about death row inmates being sent to outer space to be experimented on. He believes it's inhumane, notably that the government doesn't inform the inmates that they have no chance of returning to Earth. It also takes years for Earth to receive the report sent from these space stations, thus barring any communication. In the space station, Monty happily teaches Willow how to walk. Then, seeing his daughter grow, he starts to remember his former companions in the space station. He remembers the red-headed woman, Boise, Fondly, imagining her previous life on Earth, hitchhiking on a train with friends. He thinks she was happy, despite living a poor lifestyle. Before the space station, he and the rest were considered scums of society on Earth. Most of them were death row inmates or serving a life sentence, so when they were given the opportunity to serve science instead, they agreed. In the third year after the ship left Earth, Monty stops Boise from vandalizing the wall. Their quarrel leads to a fight that ends with Boise slicing his arm. In retaliation, he punches her. They're both taken to the infirmary, where Dr. Dibbs, stitches up Monty's arm. Boise accuses Dr. Dibbs of knowing that they will never return to Earth. Dr. Dibbs notes that their lives had improved in the space station, compared to how they were on Earth. Boise sits beside her friend, Electra, and berates Dr. Dibbs that their experiments to have a successful birth outside the solar system will only kill them. As part of the experiment, Dr. Dibbs takes samples from the male inmates in exchange for recreational pills. However, Monty doesn't take part in this. The ship's pilot, Nansen, questions why Dr. Dibbs bothers with it as all babies produce their dye from radiation. She asks Dr. Dibbs what happens if she's successful, but the doctor doesn't answer. Later on, Dr. Dibbs heads down the engine room and into a closed, private room called the box. There, she undresses and uses a device inside for an intimate time by herself. After the event, Monty sees her coming out of the box, questioning if it is suitable for her to go there. She assures him that it does. 
Dr. Dibbs knows that all the inmates think of her as a witch, but Monty compliments her to make her feel better, though he doesn't understand why she's still obsessed with the experiment. After she leaves, an inmate named Edward goes inside the box for his own pleasure. Monty refuses to use the box, as he has chosen abstinence to make himself stronger. In the garden Monty tends to the plants with his friend, Cherny. Monty enjoys being in the garden since it reminds him of home. Cherny hopes his son is living a better life on earth than he is, then asks Monty about his family. Monty replies that he only had his dog. The whole crew watches the stars getting farther from the ship's window. Even though it seems that the ship is moving backward, they are moving forward at 99% the speed of light. Unfortunately, their speed causes the space around them to warp, which bothers Monty. One day, Dr. Dibbs discovers that the ship's captain, Chandra, has developed leukemia due to radiation. Monty is thankful for having good genes that prevent him from getting affected by the radiation. Other than the fertility experiments, part of the group's mission is to harvest energy from a black hole that could provide humanity an infinite energy resource. With their journey reaching its midpoint, the crew prepares for the ship's deceleration. Monty helps strap his companions to their seats, with Boise being protective over the pregnant Electra. Days after the deceleration, Edore makes a move on Nansen, who rejects him. He checks the hallway and watches Dr. Dibbs and Chandra flirt, touching himself as they do. When Dr. Dibbs refuses Chandra, Edore disappointedly goes back into his room. With the uncomfortable situation with his roommates, Cherny decides to sleep in the garden instead. In the other room, Boise takes out supplies she took from the clinic while Mink keeps watch by the door. Electra mocks Boise as she attempts to undo Dr. Dibbs' insemination on her. Weeks later, Electra dies after giving birth, and her baby soon dies due to radiation. The inmates gather as Dr. Dibbs seals Electra's body in the morgue. Boise is upset and angered, blaming Dr. Dibbs for her friend's death. Chandra suffers a stroke just as the alarms blare. Chandra needs to input the report to sustain their life support but is not in the condition to do so. So instead, Dr. Dibbs slices his finger to take the captain's transceiver to input the report herself. Later that day, Monty collects Boise and Mink from the garden, telling them it's almost lights out. Boise looks at him fondly, then starts singing, mocking him, but her face saddens as the song ends. Chandra becomes bedridden after his stroke. Dr. Dibbs comforts him, massaging his legs to prevent atrophy. But Chandra refuses to live with his body as his prison. As he wishes, Dr. Dibbs euthanizes him and stays with him until he's gone. One night, Edore enters the girl's room, staring at Boise as she sleeps. He removes her blanket and begins touching her. Boise wakes up, screaming in protest. Mink wakes up, but Edore punches her until she's knocked down. Nansen goes in to pull him off, but Edore beats her. Boise and Mink are unable to escape, strapped to their beds. Monty and Cherny hear the commotion and help the girls. Monty continuously beats Edore until Cherny pulls him away, letting the injured man out of the room. Once freed, Mink stabs Edore in the face with broken glass. After the event, Dr. Dibbs checks on Boise, confirming that she isn't pregnant. Boise is determined not to have kids. She asks Dr. Dibbs if she truly suffocated her children and husband, thus earning her life sentence. Dr. Dibbs admits that she attempted to end her life after the tragedy. Due to the altercation with Edore, Dr. Dibbs doubles the inmates' sedatives to keep them calm and sleep through the night. While the inmates are asleep, Dr. Dibbs checks on their rooms one by one then stops at Monty's. When she notices that Nansen is still awake, she urges the woman to sleep. Instead, Nansen pretends to sleep but watches as Dr. Dibbs climbs into Monty's bed. Dr. Dibbs expresses her fondness for him, being the only one who doesn't want anything from her. With him fully sedated, Dr. Dibbs takes advantage of him then collects his fluids. She secretly inseminates Boise while she's passed out, praying for a child to be conceived. Months later, Boise successfully gives birth to a baby girl, but the new mother becomes depressed after being an unwitting part of Dr. Dibbs' experiment. On the other hand, Dr. Dibbs is delighted for a healthy baby. Years later, Willow has grown into a teenager. Money wakes up, finding her in his bed after she struggles to sleep. He scolds her, and Willow climbs back to her bed. After she does so, Money looks down on the bed, seeing blood stains that suggest she's reached womanhood. Willow confesses to having read his records that say he killed his childhood friend over the death of his dog. Money confirms this, commenting that the girl was insane. Back in the past, Monty and Cherny help Nansen prepare the shuttle as the ship approaches a black hole. Nansen is troubled by the expedition, but since she's the only pilot they have, only she can do the job. Once the men are away, Boise heads down to the airlock room, carrying a shovel. Monty, Cherny, and Dr. Dibbs watch as Nansen leaves with the shuttle in the control room. But instead of Nansen, it's Boise in the shuttle, replacing Nansen, whom she struck with the shovel earlier. Boise smiles as she approaches the black hole. But a molecular cloud diverts the shuttle's trajectory, forcing it into the center of the black hole. The black hole causes the shuttle to stretch and compress, ending Boise's journey in space. After losing her friend and finding Nansen lifeless in the engine room, Mink takes the shovel and strikes Dr. Dibbs, blaming her for all the tragedy. Monty steals the shovel from Mink and hits her on the head, accidentally killing her. Despite the happiness she found in the living child, Dr. Dibbs is driven to the edge. She leaves behind the captain's transceiver and confesses to Monty that he is the baby's father. 
Dr. Dibbs exits the spaceship, ejecting herself into space without a spacesuit on. Monty heads downstairs but is too late to save her. He harms himself, feeling the insanity of the events washing over him. He takes the captain's transceiver and looks outside the window, finding Dr. Dibbs' body floating in space with a smile on her face. With Monty and Cherney the only ones left, Cherney recounts how he viewed the mission as a way to bring glory to his family after his crimes, but his wife disagreed, wanting to have grieved for his death instead of losing him in this unknown journey. Cherney dies not long after, and Monty buries him in the garden knowing that his friend would have wanted it. After burying his friend, Monty takes the baby out of the incubator. At first, he doubted his thoughts about the child, unsure of what to do with her. But seeing her healthy and full of hope, he grows affection for her. In the present, Monty and the teenage Willow try to fix a leak in their water storage. With years revolving around the black hole, the ship is in disarray. The system detects another ship nearby, one that is similar to theirs. Monty tries to communicate with the ship but receives no response. He warns Willow that other people might be on board, but she's confused about why he's worried. Monty chuckles, wondering instead if the people could help them. But Willow replies that they don't need help. After connecting their ship with the other one, Monty enters the opposite ship to investigate. From the airlock room, he spots dogs on the other side. He pries the door open and approaches the dogs while Willow watches from the control room. The other ship is in utter chaos, with only the dogs as the living creatures. Monty finds puppies that he carries closer for Willow to see better in the camera. Once he's back in their spaceship, Willow demands the puppy, but Monty insists that they can't take it. Monty orders her to leave so that he can decontaminate. Monty heads to the garden and uses the misting system to clean himself. After he's done, Willow apologizes for insisting on the dog, realizing that they only need each other. Later that day, Monty catches Willow praying, asking her if she knew about gods. She admits that she only wanted to know how it feels to pray. The alarm alerts Monty to log his report for the day. In space, the black hole produces a ring of yellow light. Willow insists that it means they're supposed to enter it. With nothing left to lose, they prepare the second shuttle. Willow wants to keep the records they have on board. Even if Monty and his former crewmates were criminals, she always viewed them as her heroes. Monty assumes that the black hole's firewall will destroy the ship and everything in it, but Willow trusts that there's no firewall and that they will survive. As they prepare their spacesuits, Willow asks if she looks like her mother, but Monty says no. Instead, he says that she's nothing like anyone else. The shuttle ejects from the spaceship, with the father and daughter inside. Willow looks up at the spaceship that she's called home her entire life, saying farewell to it in her mind. Their shuttle is filled with the yellow light as Monty takes Willow's hand, ready to face whatever becomes of them through the black hole. Whether they pass through and reach the next stage of their lives or die, at least they leave the spaceship together. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.